द लाइफ बियॉन्ड डेथ बाय स्वामी रामचरखा चैप्टर ट्वेंटी बियॉन्ड री इनकारनेशन दोज हु इमेजिन दैट द योगी फिलासफी टीचेस दैट बिफोर द सोल देर इज एन एंडलेस चेन ऑफ अर्थली रीबर्थ्स और सीरीज ऑफ री इनकारनेशन हैव फेल्ड टू ग्रास्प द रियल स्पिरिट ऑफ द टीचिंग वेन इट इज रिमेंबर्ड दैट द अर्थ इज बट वन ऑफ द काउंटलेस नंबर ऑफ प्रिपरेटरी वर्ल्ड्स हैविंग इट्स बिगिनिंग इन टाइम एंड इट्स एंडिंग इन टाइम the folly of such a doctrine becomes apparent the earth is but one of the many schools which have been from time to time formed in the cosmos and which at the best are but mere lower grade abodes the soul of man will persist aeons after this earth and millions of others like it will have vanished into the ether of space for which it originally emerged to assign to earth life any such importance in the cosmic order is contrary to the teachings of the wise moreover it is a false teaching which holds that even in the present era and phase of the soul's existence the soul can progress no further than earthly incarnation even though the majority of the race must undergo many earthly incarnations before freedom and liberation is found still it is equally true that when a soul reaches the stage of spiritual development in which the ties of earth life no longer bind it then it is impossible that such a soul can be held to the round of earthly incarnation for even a moment of time there are many souls which are now on the astral plane undergoing the final stages of the casting off of the earthly bonds and there are many souls now in earth life which will never again return to earth but which after their next sojourn on the astral plane will rise to the higher planes of existence leaving the earth and all earthly things be- behind forever moreover there are today on earth thousands of souls which are well on the way to freedom and which will have but one more earth life to undergo and that one life will be passed in an exalted state of understanding and wisdom at the present time we are nearing the end of a cycle in which a very great number of souls are preparing for their upward flight and many who read these lines may be well advanced in that cyclic movement it would be the veriest folly of human pen to attempt to picture the nature of the existence on the higher spheres even those spheres only one grade higher than the earth for there are no words which would convey the meaning no mental concepts which would embody the nature nay more the majority of the race have not even the mental machinery which would enable them to even think of the nature of such a life the average human mind cannot begin to think even of the middle planes of the astral and the concept of the higher astral is far beyond them what then must be their position regarding the thought of the realms of being to which even the highest astral planes are but as dung hills compared with the world's greatest places enough to know that there exists an infinite scale of being composed of realm after realm ever rising higher and higher and higher and that the soul is the soul is destined to move on and on and on towards the infinite escape from the round of earthly incarnation is possible when the soul learns the truth regarding its own nature and its relation to the whole when it perceives the illusory nature of the phenomenon universe and realizes that the spiritual world is the only real one then do the ties of the material life begin to slip away and the soul begins to struggle from its confining bonds this liberation is the great and aimed great and aimed at in the yogi philosophy this is the reason and an aim of yoga some attain it by faithful works others by love of the divine and of the divine fragment in their few in their fellow human beings others by the use of the intellect and the attainment of wisdom others by development of the intuitive faculties but all these are but different roads leading to the same end when the nature of earthly things is realized they lose their hold upon the human soul 
desire then dies away and the soul is liberated and attains spiritual freedom loosened from the attraction of earth the soul takes higher flights and soars to the higher regions of being the philosophies of the orient are filled with this idea under various guises it appears to the initiated occultist the sacred teachings of the world of all religions are seen to have their esoteric side and the spirit of the esoteric teaching is always liberation as we write these words our eyes fall upon a book lying on our table a little story of the east told by a western writer this writer has caught the spirit of the east and expresses it well listen to these words and see how true they are to the spirit of the teaching the object of the sage according to the old hindu doctrine is to become absolute master of himself jitatma to render himself completely superior or rather indifferent to the attachment of all mundane clogs the ordinary mortal is a prisoner tied bound in bondage or attached to and by the object of delusion and sense whoever aims at emanci emancipation must first by a long and sterner sternness course of penance and austerity sever these attachments till even though the still even though he still remains among them they run off him like water from a duck and he goes on living according to the classic formula like a wheel that continues to revolve when the original impetus has ceased or like a branch that goes on swimming after the departure of the bird he is awake as opposed to those who still remain blinded by illusion he is free as contrasted with the bound he, the above writer however has erred when he speaks of the long and strenuous course of penance and austerities necessary to sever the material attachment the best authorities frown upon these ascetic practices and austerities and do not encourage them the true practice is that of the attainment of wisdom and the opening of the heart to the inflow of the divine wisdom which comes in the form of intuition it needs but to perceive the real nature of material things in order to lose desire for them therefore knowledge is the great liberator it is true that great unselfish love bhakti yoga will cause the scales to fall from the eyes of the soul it is likewise true that faithful works and duty performed without hope of reward karma yoga will cause the eyes to see clearly but the greatest of all yoga is gnana gnana yoga the way of wisdom to those who earn for release we recommend a careful study of the yogi philosophy or any of the other great forms of the wisdom religion and the careful following of the life of the spirit which is common to all religions rightly understood we think that the best little guide on the path in the english language is that little manual light on the path which is founded on occult axioms current even in ancient atlantis in this valuable little manual are to be found the rules which are written on the wall of the on the walls of the hall of learning by the rulers of the golden gate as a writer he has said what parsi fall is to lover lovers of music that light on the path is to aspiring souls a never ending source of inspiration and wonder the following axioms taken from its pages give the key notes when when rightly understand the balance of the manual is but an explanation of the axioms 1 kill out ambition 2 kill out desire of life 3 kill out desire of comfort 4 kill out all sense of separateness 5 kill out desire for sensation 6 kill out the desire, hunger for growth 7 desire only that which is within you 8 desire only that which is beyond you 9 desire only that which is unattainable 10 desire power ardently 11 desire peace fervently 12 desire possessions above all 13 seek out the way 14 seek the way by retreating within 15 seek the way by advancing boldly without 17 15 seek the way by advancing boldly without 15 16 stand aside in the coming battle and though thou fightest be not thou the warrior 17 look for the warrior and let him fight in thee 
एटीन टेक हिज ऑर्डर्स फॉर बैटल एंड ओबे हिम नाइनटीन लिजन टू द सॉन्ग ऑफ लाइफ ट्वेंटी स्टोर इन योर मेमोरी द मेलडी यू हीयर ट्वेंटी वन लर्न फ्राम इट द लेसन ऑफ हारमनी ट्वेंटी टू रिगार्ड अर्नेस्टली ऑल द लाइफ दैट सराउंड्स यू ट्वेंटी थ्री लर्न टू लुक इंटेलिजेंटली इन टू द हार्ट्स ऑफ मैन ट्वेंटी फोर रिगार्ड मोस्ट अर्नेस्टली योर ओन हार्ट इंक्वायर ऑफ अर्थ द एयर एंड द वाटर ऑफ द सीक्रेट्स दे होल्ड फॉर यू इंक्वायर ऑफ द होली वन ऑफ द अर्थ ऑफ द सीक्रेट्स दे होल्ड फॉर यू इंक्वायर ऑफ द इन मोस्ट द वन ऑफ इट्स फाइनल सीक्रेट विच इट होल्ड्स फॉर यू थ्रू आउट द एजेस होल्ड फास्ट टू दैट विच हैज नेदर सब्सटेंस नॉर एग्जिस्टेंस लिसन ओनली टू द वॉइस विच इज साउंडलेस लुक ओनली ऑन दैट विच इज इनविजिबल अलाइक to the inner and the outer sense these axioms have seven several and distinct meanings superimposed on upon the other and which are uncovered only by the unveiling of the eyes of the soul as it unfolds blessed is he who is able to comprehend even the first set of meanings for he is on the way the commentator upon these axioms in the little manual gives the following valuable advice to those who seek out the way of liberation and peace seek in the heart the source of evil and expunge it it lives fruitfully in the heart of the devoted disciple as well as in the heart of the man of desire only the strong can kill it out the weak must wait for its growth its fruitif- fruition its death and it is a plant that lives and increases throughout the ages it flowers when the man has accumulated unto himself innumerable existences he who will enter upon the path of power must tear this thing out of his heart and then the heart will bleed and the whole life of the man seem to be utterly dissolved this ordeal must be endured it may come at the first step of the perilous ladder which leads to the path of life it may not come until the last but o disciple remember that it has to be endured and fastened the energies of your soul upon the task live neither in the present nor the future but in the eternal this giant weed cannot flower there this bloat upon existence is wiped out by the very atmosphere of eternal thought the same commentator utters the following additional advice look flower look for the flower to bloom in the silence that follows the storm not till then it shall grow it will shoot up it will make branches and leaves and form buds while the storm continues while the battle lasts but not till the harassed spirit and in the deep silence and melted not until it is held by the divine fragment which has created it as a mere subject for grave experiment and experience and not until the whole nature has yielded and become subject unto its higher self can the bloom open then will come a calm such as comes in a tropical country after a heavy rain when nature works so swiftly that one may see her action such a calm will come to the mysterious even will occur which will which will the whole personality of the man is dissolved prove that the way has been found call it by what name you will it is a voice that speaks where there is none to speak it is a message that comes a messenger without form of substance or it is the flower of the soul that has opened it cannot be described by any metaphor but it can be felt after looked for and desired even amidst the raging of the storm the silence may last a moment of time or it may last a thousand years but it will end yet you will carry its strength within you again and again the battle must be fought and won it is only for an interval that nature can be still in conclusion let us again quote from the writer of the words above quoted words also inspired by the higher so- source of authority and wisdom the three truths there are three truths which are absolute and which cannot be lost but yet may remain silent for lack of speech the soul of man is immortal 
and its future is the future of a thing whose growth and splendor have no limit the principle which gives life dwells in us and without us is undying and eternally beneficent is not heard or seen or felt but it perceived by the man who desires perception 3 each man is his own absolute lawgiver the dispenser of glory or gloom to himself the decreer of his life his reward his punishment these truths which are as great as is life itself are as simple as the simplest mind of man feed the hungry with them and now friend and reader we leave you once more we trust that what we have said will prove to be as the seeds of future trees of knowledge within you for this is the most that the teacher may hope to do to to plant seeds we trust that we have at least brought you to the doors of the perception of the truth and there is no death that what we call death is but the other side of life and one with it may your own spiritual eyes become opened that you may perceive these truths for yourself and through your own experience and now once more good student we say to thee peace be unto thee the end the book the life beyond death by swami ramacharaka is completed om namah shivaya